could veterans be the answer to school shootings? So we are in an era of the Me Too movement. Unlike most people, I don't believe in unicorns. I don't believe that our world is filled with rainbows and sunshine. I understand that our world is a vicious place. Our world is a deadly place. Our world is filled with people that don't care about you, that, that they're there to hurt you. They put their priorities before you and they don't really don't care what they need to do in order to get them. This is the Nico Lagan Show. Warning. Warning. This show contains explicit content. Listener discretion is advised. Real. Real. Raw. Raw. And shooting you straight. This is the Nico Lagan Show. And now your host, Nico. So today, folks, is going to be an exciting one because there's a few things I want to speak about. There's a few subjects out there that are really, really worth touching and this is what it's all about i want to speak about the current events that are out there that matters to you first of all i want to speak about one of my favorite subjects could veterans be the answer to school shootings think about it i have the answer so stay tuned because i have an answer for you i also want to speak about jonathan majors you know the guy that's being accused of sexual harassment or sexual abuse or even beating up on his girlfriend? I want to touch about that and I want to talk about how this is really relevant for men because we've been six years in what we call the Me Too movement. So we are in an era of the Me Too movement and I want to touch about this. I want to speak about this today. And if we have time, if we have time, because we don't know. Maybe it's going to go to tomorrow. But I want to speak about transgenders, men into women's sport. Do men have a place in women's sport? What do you think? So stay tuned because this is going to be a great one. Now I want to welcome to the Nico Lagan Show where the show where we speak about solutions to the real problem facing your society today. There's no fluff. There's no political correctness. Just simple truth. And I am your host, Nico Lagan. So welcome. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate every single one of you out there. So thank you. I appreciate you. I have a lot. I I'm very grateful that you guys choose to listen to this. Now, <laughs> the first thing I want to speak about is a subject that I, clo that, that I have very close to heart. It's something that I've been saying for years. I've been speaking about this, not online. This is something I just started doing. But it is something that I've been speaking about a lot over the past few years. And it blows my mind that this is not a reality already. It blows my mind that I thought about this. And then it seems that nobody else is actually presenting that as an option to an obvious problem that we have. And it's a win-win solution. I see nothing bad coming out of this. And it blows my mind that this is not something that's already in place. Because to me, it's something that would be so simple to do. And yet, where is it? I don't see it anywhere. What am I talking about? Ha! Well, let me tell you what I'm talking about. I'm talking about putting armed veterans in schools. It's a big problem in the U.S. Let's not lie to each other here. I'm Canadian. We don't have that problem in Canada. We don't. Have, we don't see the amount of school shootings. We. I think we had one 15 years ago or something like that, and that's basically it. But in the U.S., it is a reality. Unlike most people, I don't believe in unicorns. I don't believe that our world is filled with rainbows and sunshine. I understand that our world is a vicious place. Our world is a deadly place. Our world is filled with people that don't care about you, that, that they're there to hurt you. They put their priorities before you and they don't really don't care what they need to do in order to get them. So this is the world we live in. We need to accept the fact that without evil, good does not exist and vice versa. Evil will always be part of us. It is something that we are as men. We have a portion of us that's evil. We have a portion of us that's good, hopefully more good than evil, but it is still a fact that we will always have this in our lives. And this is a reality. And trying to wish for utopian society is not the solution for this. This will never happen. We will never live in a utopia because this is not what we are as human beings. So we need to accept that right now and find solid solutions to a problem that exists. There's nothing we can do. Uh, we can't just sit on our hands like we've been doing for years now since I think Columbine was the first shooting in 1999. And yet 
to this day, we're sitting on our fucking hands and we're still not doing what needs to get done in order to protect our most valuable resource that are our children, that are the future to mankind. And one of those solutions is so freaking simple. Put vets in the schools. We have here in the U.S. a nation that has so many veterans. As per the last statistics, we are talking about 6.4% of the population of the U.S. are veterans. That's more than 16 million people that are trained, know how to use a firearm, know how to use tactics of war, have been in situation where they defended their countries, that they took it upon themselves to be the protector. And this is what a great man do. This is what a good man does. He protects the people that needs protection. You have 16 million of them. How are they not being used to their full potential right now? I posted a video about this a couple of weeks ago and I'm amazed. I'm absolutely freaking amazed by the response that I got. I did not expect this. I was expecting to have a lot of a lot of uh, clawback, a lot of bad comments, because I normally do. Most of the, the things I believe in, people tend to be against it. And you know what? It's okay. My ideas are not for everybody. But that being said, the response to the video that I posted where I was talking about Conor McGregor, because Conor McGregor a few weeks ago said that one of the things that could help with the school shootings is to put armed guards into schools. I agree with him 100%. Not a fan of Conor McGregor, not a fan of his antics as a fighter, as a person, but you know what? When somebody's right, he's fucking right. And he is right about this. But I wanted to take it up a notch. I wanted to use that opportunity to say, not only should we put armed guards into schools, but we should use our veterans. Who better to care for our children than veterans that are trained to do so? So, the video went super well. I have a lot of great comments. I'm probably above a thousand comments now on that video. And my mind is blown. I'm so freaking happy that people are vibing with the solution, that people are actually thinking that this is a good idea. And a lot of the comments that I'm getting are from veterans that are like, hey, bro, count me in. Hey, bro, count me in. I used to be in the airborne. I used to be in the military. I used to be a SEALs. I used to be this. I used to be that. So many people are coming up saying this is a great idea. So let me break it down for you. Let Let's take the time to break this down in order for you out there to understand that what I'm talking about could make sense. So as I said, 6.4% of the American, the American population is veterans. That means more than 16 million people. And one of the things that, keep on, that kept on coming up in the comments from that, my video is that, what about PTSD? Because there is a misunderstanding out there that because people are veterans, that they're fucked in the head for lack of a better term, that they are so crippled by PTSD that they're the one that's going to turn into shooters. And this is so ludicrous. It makes, obviously those people have not met with a lot of veterans. I have a lot of friends that are veterans, a lot of people that I know are veterans, and they're not crippled in the head. They actually are capable of dealing with what they did. They understand why they did what they did when they did it. And I wanted to, I, I wanted to make sure that they weren't right by saying this, that Veterans are not more prone to PTSD than the average person. And if they did, to which extent? Because this right there would kill my idea, right? Of course it would. You don't want <laughs> the person that's supposed to be responsible for the security of the children to be the one bringing a gun and shooting people. Obviously, right? So by the statistics, if you look at what Veterans Affairs is saying, if there's three numbers that I saw, the first coming from Veterans Affairs with the veterans that are not using the veteran health care, the veteran health care, sorry, is 7% compared to a 6% of the normal population. So the regular population out there experience PTSD at a 6% rate. As per Veterans Affairs, the people, the veterans that do not take their health care, they're looking at 7%. The numbers coming from the VA when it comes to their services, to when they use their doctors, their services, they're talking about 10% of men, veterans, experience PTSD syndromes, or PTSD, PTSD symptoms, sorry, and 19% for women. Now, there's an independent study that came out that said that as per what they think, it's closer to 23% of veterans experience PTSD. So 
let's play devil's advocate. Let's assume that this is actually true, that we are looking at 23%. You know what? Let's call it 25 because it's even easier to calculate. So let's say that 25% of veterans have PTSD. We, I, I, I mentioned a few times now, 16 millions. This is the amount of veterans that you have in the U.S. So if you, there's two numbers that are important. So let's start with the 16 million. There's two, uh, there's two numbers we need to keep track of. First is how old are those veterans? Veterans are 50% above 60, 65 years of age. And zero to 65 is the other 50%. I'm breaking it down to, it's, it's more like 52% for one and 37 or 47% for the other, but let's call it 50-50. So the people that are above 50, 65, I'm not saying they shouldn't be, but let, let's just remove them and say that eight, more than 8 million veterans right now are between the ages of 18 and 64. Now let's remove 25% because this is what the create the, the, the bigger study is showing, even though the numbers are not necessarily saying that from the VA, but let's say that that independent, uh, these independent companies are right. So let's say that 25%, that means you remove about 2 million. So you still have 6 million veterans between the age of 18 and 64 that are capable of becoming an armed guard in a school. So how many schools do we have in the US? About 115,000. 115, That's all school counted from elementary, high school, university colleges, technical colleges, like anything that has a label of school, they're counted on that. So 115,000 of them. In my opinion, you need about two, maybe more, but let's say you need two armed guards, two armed veterans. As per Indeed.com, the average salary for a armed guard is around $41,000, between 41 and 42. So let's call it 42. If you have 115,000 school, you times that times two, it's 230 times 41. $42,000 per year per veteran, you're looking at about $9 trillion, like between the upper nine and the 10. So let's call it $10 trillion. This is your cost to have two armed veterans in every school out there. How is that a bad idea? I want to know how people think that this is not a great idea. And that's two reasons why I'm saying this, because one, you're protecting your most valuable asset that is children. This is the number one thing. Number two, you are giving purpose back to somebody that lost his purpose. For a man, there's nothing more important than purpose. A man without purpose is meaningless. What is the point of him living if he has no reason to live? Can you have a greater reason to live than protecting children? We're talking about people that were ready to sacrifice their life for what they believed in their countries. What do you think they are ready to do to protect children? It's a win-win solution. I really want to hear what you guys think about this. So even if it's not the live, even if it's you're, you're listening to the podcast that I will publish after this, wherever you're hearing this message, I want to hear your comments. I want to know what you guys out there are thinking about putting veterans in schools in order to protect our children against school shooters. School shooters are cowards. School shooters are the same as bullies. If you stand up to them, they will not do what they do because they, they prey on the weak. They want soft target. Give consequences to those people. Make them understand that this shit is not going to fly anymore. You want to go into a school with bad intention? Guess what, motherfucker? You're going to get shot. And this is what needs to happen. Mo I know that a lot of people out there do not like the fact that I'm preaching about putting guns in school that... People want to believe that schools is that guns are not the answer. More guns is not the answer. But what are you? What what can we do? What can we do? If criminals have guns, taking away our guns is not going to change anything except making them more powerful. How do you equalize this by putting people that are trained to do this and are ready to die to defend children? You know, there's a saying that says a polite civil a polite society is an armed society. If you know that there's consequences to your actions guess what? You're going to start fucking thinking about your actions. Now, there's a thing on that subject that I want to touch about, uh, that I want to touch to is I had a guy last week that responded to the same video I've been talking about. And what he said was, it absolutely blew my mind. He basically said that, hey brother, love the idea. Um, not only do I love the idea, but I've been doing it myself. So the guy has been posting in the parking lot across the school from his daughter's school. So 
he didn't tell me exactly who he is because he see I, I understand it says privacy and nobody's everybody's entitled to their privacy but from what i get from the conversation that i had on tiktok with him is that he po he he spoke to the school so the schools are aware of who he is of what he does from what i gather he's an old veteran because he has a pension so he doesn't have to work every single day and he approached the police station out of his um out of his town as well to let them know what he was doing that he was posting up there to protect the children not only is he protecting the children not only is he leading by example not only is he not waiting for the government to do something for him he just chose it upon the, he took it upon himself to say you know what i believe that i can do this let me be the leader let me do this he actually has another father that's doing it with them now and he has another and he has one of the mothers that's doing it with them so now there are three parents posting up in the parking lot across the school to make sure that no motherfuckers with bad intentions are going to that school is that not mind blowing is that not something that 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 is absolutely amazing because to me this is what it's all about if you want to be the change in the world be the change you want to see if you want to be the person doing something inspire others to do the same lead by example and inspire others to do what you do because that is the right thing to do and i hope that i'm able to speak to this guy to get a bit more information as to the procedures that he used in order to do that like how did he approach the school the police uh i don't want to share any of his tactics i don't want to share anything that has to do with how he does things mostly just how did he get to a point where this was acceptable by the school and by the police station so again let me know what you think about this because i believe this could change the education system in the us and not only can we save the life of the children but we can also give purpose to people that need purpose and if i judge by the thousand at least the thousand comments that i've got if i judge by what the veterans are telling me most of them are, are on board like the amount of message i'm like hey yeah brother man i would be tell me when tell me where i'm fucking down for this shit you know the amount of people that would quit the the amount of veterans that would quit their job in order to do that it, it's astonishing i was so happy by the comments that i got so i know this is a great idea we just need to figure out a way to make this a reality so if anybody out there that's listening to this is in legislation or or that's in school board organization that is that someone has local authority to do something about it please contact me let me know how we can make this shit a reality what can i do in order to help you make this a reality because i believe this can change everything in the us now there's a second thing i wanted to talk about today because this to me is another thing that catch me that that sticks me in the heart all the time i'm very passionate about this and it is what we have called the me too movement or the i like to call it the me too era because since 2007 since uh uh Weinstein since the movie Mogul Weinstein got accused by like 86 women that he sexually harassed them by taking advantage of his position all we can talk about right now is fucking me too everywhere and you know I want to talk about the fact that what have we learned over the past 6 years what has happened over the past six the past six years and can we even say that it it's good it's bad what have we learned let's let's take a stand and just say what have we learned and what is the opinion of a man like me when it comes to this so let's say that let me say this first and foremost i like the idea of the me too when you look at it for what it is i i agree with it i agree with the me too movement the essence of the message i agree with i completely completely agree with it and like take let's say let, let's take it for what it is the me too movement was the, was the main idea of the me too movement was to have a was to have a movement where people would be able to show the perpetrators of sexual harassment sexual abuse where they could put it they could take something that they believe was hidden behind the curtains and put it into the limelight put it forward Let, let's call it this as per as per wikipedia the description of the me too movement is this 
It's a social movement against sexual abuse, sexual harassment, and the rape culture. Is there somebody out there that can say that they don't agree with this? That they don't agree that women and men should not be sexually abused? I fucking agree with that. That we shouldn't have, we shouldn't be uh, sexually harassed? I agree. And that if there is such a thing as rape culture, that this should not exist. We can all agree with that, right? Is there somebody out there that don't agree with that? I don't think so. I think we are all on the same page when it comes to that. Where it gets different, I think the thing that we need to talk about is this is fine. The description, woo, we're all happy. Fuck yeah, let's, let's make this a reality. Now, what we're seeing is not quite that. And I want to point out that, you know, the if you look at the justice system in North America, we have the idea, the justice system is based on the fact that you are innocent until proven guilty. Innocent before proven guilty. What does that mean? That means that when I step into a courtroom, my defense lawyer is going to try to show, obviously, that I'm innocent. But his job is to show enough proof that will show the jury that there is doubt, that there is enough doubt so that you can see, you know what? Maybe he didn't do it. This is what it's all about. But it is up to the prosecutor and the victim to prove that I did this. I don't need to prove I'm considered innocent until proven guilty. And this is what we are all about. This is what our justice system is based on. And this is the best way to do it. You cannot start assuming that people are guilty even before they can defend themselves. Like, this is not right. Like, people can easily accuse somebody else of doing something without it being true. And the thing that I find with the Me Too movement is this. It looks like it's becoming a witch hunt. Now, not only are guys on the microscope everywhere, but they need to be super fucking careful about everything. Because if you look at a term like sexual harassment, what the fuck does that mean? What does sexual harassment actually mean? And you know what I found? It means whatever the fuck you want, you want it to, me, to mean, depending on who's doing it. And let me explain it this way. It looks like right now, le take a beautiful woman. She's, she's being sexually harassed. And I'm air quoting for the people that are just listening to the podcast that are not watching it. I'm air quoting here. But let's say that there is a beautiful woman that is getting approached by a guy. He's... He's hitting on her. Obviously, he's hitting on her. He wants to take her out. Whatever he his intentions are, he's hitting on her. You know, sexual harassment is based on the look of that guy. If that woman doesn't find that guy attractive, she will call it sexual harassment. If on the other end, that guy's a very good looking guy and she's very attracted to him, it's not sexual harassment anymore. It's just a guy hitting on a woman. And this is where I'm seeing is that this is one of the biggest problematic that I see with the Me Too movement, is that everything that a guy can do in order to hit on a woman, to, to let her know that he is interested in her, can be seen as sexual harassment. It's to a point where me opening up the door to a woman could be sexual harassment. It's like, I'm opening up the door to you because I think I want to fuck you. Like, are you fucking crazy? Like, this is pure craziness. I'm actually holding up the door because I'm a polite individual. I will do that to a guy. Does that mean I want to fuck him? Fuck no, it, it doesn't. I'm simply being polite, and my politeness could be interpreted as sexual harassment if that girl does not find me attractive. Is that not ludicrous? The, the second thing about the Me Too movement, and we can talk about this with... Um, Ah, uh, what's his name again? It's Major, Major, Major. Uh, hold on, I'm just looking for a name. I'm drawing a blank here. It's, uh, shit, shit, what do you think? Jonathan Majors. So it came out a couple, like a, a few days ago that presumptively he has assaulted his girlfriend. We don't know if it's true. We don't know if it's not true. And I'm not voicing my opinion on if it's true or not, because this is not what I want to talk about. This, I will let the justice system deal with him the way it should be dealt with. But I want to use him as an example. I want to use him, and the example that I want to use is that he's being crucified right now in the public place, like on the public square, he's being crucified. He is losing all of his endorsement, like the army was supposed to have, they had recorded spots for him, they're dumping him. Uh, right now, all of his sponsorships are getting removed one by one. 
we don't know about what what Disney's going to do because he is Kong the Conqueror in um, their um, Infinity War, not the Infinity Wars, but in the um, the Avenger group. So he is one of the one of the main characters now as part of the Avengers. So we don't know what's going to happen, but he's being dropped everywhere. Like people don't want to deal with him. I, his, he had a TV show being dropped. Army Army endorsement deal being dropped. All of his other endorsement dro- uh, endorsement are getting dropped. Why? Because there's a woman that accused him of doing something wrong. Again, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that he did or did not do it. I'm not touching that one with a 10,000 foot pole. But what I'm saying is, is it enough for a woman to say that he did something to me? Are we are we down to that point now that somebody can just approach somebody else and say, you know what? That guy did this or that woman did that. And we will crucify him on the public place way before he ever sees the courtroom. Is it where we are now? Like the cancel culture is that strong now that just because somebody says something about you that we should listen to that person like she's preaching the truth and make sure that that person that's being accused of something loses everything without us even knowing if it's fucking true or not. I want you to think about this. I want you to to really imagine if you were in his situation. If you're the one that's been working your whole fucking life to accomplish something, and then you have somebody that decides that you have done something wrong. Should they have the power to destroy you without an investigation, without ever going to court? I don't think so. I think it's fucking bullshit, and this should not happen. But this is what we're seeing right now with... The the woke culture that we see right now, with the cancel culture that we see right now, with the Me Too movement that we're seeing right now, those guys are being destroyed even before they see the courtroom. And another thing worth mentioning about the courtroom is that for the longest time, or even today, when you're looking at jury cases where it's not just a judge, but there's a jury, we isolate those jury members in order for them to not be influenced by the popular opinion so that they can concentrate on getting their opinions, they get, getting their opinions from the facts that are presented in court. We isolate them away from people to make sure that the only voice they listen to is the one of the judge, the ones of the prosecutor, the defense lawyer, the people that are in court with the facts, not fucking people's opinion out there as to what they believe happened or didn't happen. No, no, the facts. Now we're sh- we're taking that shit away from people. So a guy like Jonathan Major, if he did it again, did it or not, I don't know. But did you think that somebody that's being crucified like him on the public place will have a real jury with a non-biased opinion if it comes to that? I don't think so. Personally, I don't think so. I think that their opinions is going to be made way before he enters the courtroom. And this is why a movement like the Me Too movement, although has great origins, they want to do what's right. They're getting way too much power just because we're told that we should believe what those pe- what those women are, are saying because they have no reasons to lie. You know what? Let me tell you this. As per the studies that I've seen, eight, it goes between 2% and 10% of accusations are false. I've seen studies that says 16% of sexual harassment, uh, sexual harassments are false. So don't tell me that women have no reason to do this because another study is showing that 99% of people that do false accusation see no consequences for their actions. So they can say whatever the fuck they want, destroy the life of somebody that's been working their whole fucking life to get there and they get no fucking consequences. So don't tell me that there's no reasons for them to do it. But you let me know what you think. I want to know your opinion. So make sure to let me know in the comments below what you think about putting veterans in schools and what do you think about the Me Too movement? Are we crucifying people before they even get to the courtroom? And does that allow them to have a fair judgment or is it a thing of the past? On that note, I want to thank you for watching. I want to let you know that I'm very, very grateful for every single one of you out there. If you're watching this live, if you're watching the um, the podcast, if you're listening to it, thank you. I appreciate you and I'm very grateful. And until next time, remember this. 
the world is changed one man at a time and it only takes one man to change the world. Peace out. You've been listening to the Nico Lagan Show. Nico has been involved in the martial arts for 20 years. He's a Muay Thai coach, focus coach, podcaster, and sought-after public speaker. We hope you've enjoyed the show, and we hope you've gotten some useful and practical information. We'll be back soon, but in the meantime, find us on Facebook and Instagram at Coach Nico Lagan and on YouTube at The Nico Lagan Show. See you next time.